the reason the Harry Potter books are so popular is because they're Christian literature. I mean, as, as Pascal said, there's, there's a, um, a God-shaped vacuum inside the human heart, and it's the only God will fit in that spot. And we're, we're looking everywhere in our lives for something that will fill that spot. What's, what's, uh, we, we especially look to literature and film for that, because our diversions, as, as Mercy Liotti said, in, in a secular culture, entertainment takes on a religious function. It's our, it's our escape from a, a natural, secular culture. Uh, you look at the Harry Potter books, and as I said, they're so laden with Christian imagery and with symbols and with themes and with meaning that all come from a Christian background. Uh, Rowling has succeeded in smuggling the gospel into people's hearts, and they have this response to it. I mean, I, as I've traveled around the country talking about Harry Potter, I've met people that have read the stories 15, 16, 17 times. Uh, and I say to them, do you understand that there's a, there's a resurrection theme in these books, that love conquers death, and that you're having a response to that theme and that meaning, and they're shocked. Most, most of them are unchurched, um, but that these books are so popular is because the human being is designed by Christ, for Christ, and these books bring that message to them. I have, I have never met Mrs. Rowling. Um, it'd be an honor to meet her, certainly. Um, I have no idea what her response. Friends have told me that uh, the reason I'll never know until, the, until all the books are out is that uh, because I've, in a way, un unwrapped a lot of the mystery. When, when she said, if you understand the Christian meaning of these books, you understand their ending, the reason that she's never going to talk about it until the ending is that she doesn't want to reveal that mystery. Um, certainly, I would have a lot of questions for her about um, the direction of the stories because I want to know how they end, too. Uh, I would, I would simply, though, profess my admiration for what she's doing. Um, C.S. Lewis says that great literature trains people in the stock responses, uh, smuggles the gospel, and baptizes the imagination. And certainly her books, more than any other books uh, in transit, in publication right now, are doing those three things. They train us in the stock responses, the virtuous responses, the truth and virtue and beauty. They smuggle the gospel, as I said, they all these Christian themes and images, the resurrection subtext. This. And they, they baptize the imagination. They prepare us. If we're not already church, they prepare us to accept the Christ because we've already had some imaginative experience of the power of the resurrection and the great story. Um, so again, I, I, I just thank her for doing that kind of work. Can't be easy. What I most want readers to take away from my book is that uh, art and literature are still an important part of the Christian walk. What I don't want them to do is, is uh, to think, okay, the Harry Potter books are okay, therefore I no longer have to be on guard about occultic influence. I don't want them backstepping from their guardianship of their children, from occult influence or from books and movies which are um, dissipating or undermine Christian faith. Um, what I do want them to understand, though, is that art and literature has this edifying influence, can have this edifying influence. In fact, the, the great bulk of English literature, really until the late 20th century, uh, was entirely that kind of literature. You're reading Jane Austen, reading uh, Charles Dickens, reading Shakespeare. All of these authors from the English tradition were Christians, and that art and literature fortifies them in the faith. Having said that, I want them to understand that they still need to be discerning. They still need to understand that uh, there's a lot of trash out there that really um, can be hurtful to your children. That their, their, con their concerns about the influence of the culture on the faith of their children and their life in Christ is not foolish. <laughs> it's essential. It's, it's their uh, scripturally required uh, responsibilities to God and to their children. <laughs>